All right, chip of the day. The chip of the day is a very um, common part in the old days. I don't think you'll see any today, but it's a 75451. The 75451 seemed to be everywhere. And uh, it was because people needed to drive things. The TTL circuits did their thing, but every once in a while you needed to be able to actually turn something on or drive a cable or, or do something. You needed more oomph. And uh, this has uh, open collector output, but it's 300 milliamps. And I think it can go up to 30 volts. Um, so it was pretty heavy duty. So these were, these were used a lot. Now today, um, I doubt that anybody would ever use this part. They would just use a 2N7000 or something probably um, to get to get an open collector drive type of thing. Um, one of the reasons that I do these um, chip of the day and I'll show parts that are no longer made. One is that I have them, and so um, I'm just gonna run through my inventory of parts. Um, but it'll be really important for you to understand these parts if you ever need to repair anything. So I'm all about repairing old instruments and stuff, right? And so you need to know how they were repaired, how they were used, what these parts were good for, um, when they're not good for. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so the chip of the days are a lot about, uh, you know, uh, documenting what was done in the past so you can continue to use some of these old instruments and keep them in repair and stuff. So we're going to be taking a look at um, uh, this package right here. Uh, so this is a um, uh, let's see, Top View 453. No, that's not the right one. 451. Okay, this one. I'm sorry. Uh, the 75451. It's a dual package, so you get two uh, open collectors, they're both referenced to ground, and you have these NAND gates. And so uh, we will just use one of these for, for the demo, okay? And so whenever you have a open collector, you need to pull it up to something. So I'm gonna pull these up, and then we'll watch the, uh, we'll watch the signals come out of them. So here's what I have set up over here. Let me rearrange the camera. Okay, so the little 75451 is down there. It's an 8-pin dip. It's a, it's a plastic package. Um, I'm going to be driving it with a 555 oscillator, so a clock will be going into one of those NAND gates. And the other side of the NAND gate, I'm just going to pull high, and so we'll be able to send the signal through. So that's what I have wired here. Um, now I'm going to uh, load it first with a, with a 1K resistor, okay? And uh, we can take a look at the, uh, at the waveform that we're getting. And so this is the... Uh, the 555 going and um, we can look at the voltages here so this is 5 volts so 5 10 15 so we're getting about 15 volts and it's whacking up and down uh, so very very good so let's zoom in though let's take a look at this uh, the falling edge is the one we're interested in right that's the one we, we pull down on it we can go here to uh, let's say 5 nanoseconds and so it's about a 10 nanosecond fall time from here to here, it's about two divisions, five, five nanoseconds per division, something like that. Okay, um, so uh, we need to do a little bit of calculation here first, okay? So uh, let's go back to the paper. Okay, um, I want to drive this thing at its, uh, at its maximum, okay? And its maximum is uh, 300 milliamps. Okay, so 300 milliamps. Okay, so I have a um, 51 ohm resistor, 51 ohms. And uh, what voltage with 51 ohms gives me 300 milliamps, right? Well, that's an easy calculation. Um, we have uh, uh, 51 ohms, we have 300 milliamps, uh, that's 15, so V equals IR, and so you take I and you take R, multiply those together, and you get 15.3 volts, okay? So if we set our power supply to 15.3 volts and we have a 51 ohm resistor, then this, mat, this uh, chip is loaded to its maximum, okay? So uh, down here I've got uh, the 51 ohms, and here's a 1K. We're, run, we're running a 1K now, but I'll move the uh, I'll move the power over here to the to the uh, oops to the uh, 51 ohms, okay. And uh, we are 15.3 uh, volts at 100 milliamps. 
Um, and that's because we have a duty cycle. It's going to be 300 milliamps max. Uh, but you can see that, uh, yeah, it's doing about the same thing, right? So let's compare those two. This is with the uh, 300 milliamps. Let's turn on ref and we'll, uh, uh, we'll, remember, we'll remember that one. And then I will move over to the 1K resistor. So now we have 1K instead. And uh, we can compare these two. And you can see that the, uh, the 1K is here. Oops. Uh, always touching the stupid scope. Uh, turn that off. There we go. Touch, touch disable. Now I can touch it. Um, so uh, you can just barely see it here, but the, uh, uh, the, the 51 ohms was a little bit slower. It, or I should say a little bit faster. It pulled it down a little bit faster. So... Um, yeah, it's a pretty fast part, so it doesn't really matter if you're loading it lightly or you're loading it um, uh, heavily. It's still giving a, a nice a nice edge. So I think one needs to do a power calculation of how much power is dissipated in the uh, plastic package. I think that may be a limitation. Um, I don't know if, if you could, say, have 300 milliamps DC on one side and 300 milliamps DC, so you have a full 600 milliamps 100% of the time. Will that package actually last? I haven't done that calculation, but I'm assuming maybe not. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, we are dropping a little bit of resistance or uh, a little bit of voltage in the part. The uh, NPN transistors uh, that uh, are are in the part. They're not like FETs. They have some resistance to them, right? They're not going to pull it all the way down and have 0.01 ohms or something. They're actually going to drop some some amount of voltage, and that'll be that'll be some amount of power. And yes, this part will get hot. Um, so I, I I don't know if uh, maybe somebody can comment down below if they've used these in a DC mode, uh, how much they can actually get away with. Um, but I'm sure that's in the I'm sure that's in the data sheet. All right. So, uh, there we go. It's a cute little package. Uh, and you will see them a lot of the times being used for um, RS, what is it, RS4, I don't remember the numbers now. It's like RS232, only heavy duty. Um, you might see them there. Um, 300 milliamps, you might see them being used to drive uh, relays. Um, let's see, does it have a... Uh, Feature, does it say what these might be good for? Oh, here we go. Uh, high, high speed logic buffers, that's right. Power drivers, okay. Relay drivers, that's what I just said. Lamp drivers, okay. Back in the old days, uh, you needed to actually turn on incandescent lamps, <laughs> right? And they were, they were, they were high, they were high, uh, high amounts of current. Even LEDs, maybe you'll have a, uh, an LED that you need to drive at a very high current or multiple LEDs and they add up to 300. Um, MOS drivers, interesting. Uh, bus drivers and memory drivers. Oh yeah, back in the day, memory was a real big uh, power hog and uh, you needed to be able to uh, switch some current. So anyway, there you go. Chip of the day is a uh, DS75451. There's also 452s and 453s that have a little bit different, but uh, yeah, I think you'll see most of the 451s in circuits.